Yeah. So we got from uh, from Lars Hansen. Is there a possibility during the BFA BlizzCon or during? Sorry, do that again. Is there a possibility <laughs> during the B uh, the Battle for Azeroth that Blizzard finds out Shadowlands is DOA? And then puts the B team to finish it while the A team remakes WoW for 10.0. It sounds like we get Thanos snap in 9.2. I don't think they have an A team and B team, really. No. That's that I have no idea how they split up their production resources between patches. That surely must be a tricky thing to work out. Um, I don't think that would happen. I think they were probably quite bullish in Shadowlands and are probably surprised at aspects of its... Uh, reception. I think so as well, especially looking at like, because when it got the fastest selling PC game, so they must have looked at like pre-orders and went, this is pumping. This is pumping like crazy. This is going to absolutely go nuts. And I imagine, honestly, they probably found out around the same time as we did. The players didn't like it, which was like two months after the game yeah. launched. We're like, hang on, this doesn't quite feel as right as we expected it to what's going on oh yeah all the problems we raised were as bad as we expected shit some of that and then also the beta was very not finished aspects that were good but yeah the beta itself was so unfinished like even even writing launch guides for ourselves and for yeah. Wildhead was really hard because deciphering the design intent of things was quite quite tricky because there were was blue posts about it. Yeah. The communication was still pretty rough there. Um, so yeah, look, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I, I Look, I hope you're right. I'll put it that way. Mm. I don't think that's what it is. I think that right now they are just struggling forward with the usual way they do things. But if you were right, then it would probably mean that, you know, a 10.0 is what I want, but I don't think it's going to be that. But I hope you're right. I really hope you're right. We got from Debbie Wells, um, who said, regarding Garrosh, Chromie tells us in Legion that of all the variations of him that exist, we had the sheer dumb luck to end up with one of the worst. Ah, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. So, uh, Chromie needs to tell Thrall that, I think. <laughs> oh yeah because it's basically thrall's fault yeah that makes it more thrall's fault yeah like what do you mean he could have been reasonable if you didn't throw him into position of power and tell him to debbie's got know. the fastest brain in the west <laughs> picking up all right, this like, shit yeah excellent. all this shit <laughs> wonderful excellent work debbie that excellent is great work. yeah man so there you go that that yeah. does throw a little bit of a that's yeah. an interesting additional piece yeah. of information yeah, it turns out mother does not know best <laughs> yeah it turns out Dragon does no shit. <laughs> Tur turns out there's he could have he canonically yeah. actually based yeah based on what Debbie just said there canonically mm. it's quite it's way more likely that Garrosh turns out not to be the way that our Garrosh was yeah. with all the different timelines yeah which then means it is like what sent him in that direction and a large part of that's thrall so that's actually and that's very interesting and also that happened in Legion now Legion yeah. is where the elements abandon thrall. Ish, or does he, mm -hmm. you know, not have the will to wield them or whatever? Um, it's interesting that the same expansion where Thrall doesn't use the Doom Hammer as it feels disconnected from the elements, that is the same yeah. expansion that, as Debbie points out, Chromie just sort of says, Yeah, our Garrosh is one of the bad ones. Yep. What if you never met that Thrall? Yep. Whoopsies. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Mm. From Jay Z. <laughs> Jay Z said, We know the Archon was the one of them that imprisons Oval. That means she has no problems acting against a bad arbiter, right? But why does she now have a problem uh, to make or a problem with making decisions for the mechanical arbiter? Mm. What's the Archon been doing with the nine dot one end? Wait, is there Archon stuff in the nine dot end plot? I mean, generally the thing with the Archon is the Archon just follows the purpose, yeah. and the purpose isn't particularly useful. <laughs> yep. It, it, the way I'd put it is like. The purpose is just how to maintain a self-perpetuating system. But your yeah. problem is that the purpose is no longer fit for a purpose whenever a variable enters that equation that is not what the uh, the forefathers or, you know, whatever thought of, right? Yep. Um, and I, I think that's basically the thing with the Archon. She is a de devout follower of the purpose. Hmm. And I think for her because of what Zoval did and that that was a betrayal, it was okay to act against Zoval as a bad arbiter. And I guess now, 
with the mechanical arbiter, it's uh, yeah, it's like her making decisions, but that's I think it's just as simple as this. She follows the purpose, and the purpose basically is no matter what that mechanical arbiter does, it's right. Away you go. There's not much of the Archon doing. Basically, the Archon's job is not to think. Yeah. The Archon's Incredible. job is to uphold and do. Yep. Just and, but also, yeah, it was, it was the Primus that imprisoned uh, Zoval, not the Archon, mm. um, for that. Uh, yeah. I'm sure the Archon did have a, you know, a, a part to play in subduing yeah. and helping to subjugate Zoval. Okay. What, what is the purpose? Uh, it's a, religion. Uh, like, yeah, <laughs> Subcoder said, why wasn't the betrayal part of the purpose? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess it's because what Zoval wanted was against the purpose. So it would be like yeah. a blaspheming thing. I guess so the purpose would predate Zaval, and he he erred from the purpose. So then they went. Well, that's not very purpose of you. In the bin, back yeah. to the purpose. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Can someone explain why he's called the jailer when he's the one who was jailed? <laughs> that's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's so. F that's like such a an insanely silly oversight. For how it's because gotcha. it. it's kind of like oh it's ironic he was the jailer of the damned but he was the jailed of the he was the jailed and the damned you're like very smart but also you know why did I call it uh, I suppose they want to give him a name that makes him sound bad yeah, yeah. it's like it's the jailer I suppose to the jailed because you're like well why was he put in jail uh, let's talk about that later <laughs> so yeah so um, that's it's interesting as for what's going to go on there with the likes of the Archon. Yeah, as we saw in the Uther, um, you know, in the Uther bit, hmm. the Archon's thinking differently now. Uh, yeah, you know, actually, I think the Archon is one of the characters who could have some development. I hope so. I mean, I would hope so too. Yeah, uh, as time goes forward, and it will be interesting to see what goes on with the Covenants because, I mean, at this stage, the Covenant lock makes no sense, and the whole yeah. you know, oh, this Covenant's pissed off. He joined that one. Makes what? no sense when the cov members of the Covenants are on the front lines with each other. Yeah. So we really need to fix all of that up. Yep. Um, yeah, and I mean, as for this mechanical arbiter, I guess it's just that thing. They all had faith in the purpose. They thought that that mechanical arbiter was, a, you know, is the purpose. And I think that that's basically, you know... I think that's basically that. As for making decisions for the Mechanical Arbiter, I don't really think she did any of that. The only decision she really made was like reforming how the Carrions operate with themselves. And that was in the face of it being extremely obvious that her adherence or her reading of the purpose was in fact damaging the purpose. And I think that is how a being like her will be able to justify and rationalize that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just. Stuck. I was like, does he have anything to add? Is he thinking? What's what's Matt? Yeah. What does Matt's current emote mean? <laughs> so I'm just stuck on the complexities of the mechanical arbiter. Uh, how was that designed? I guess because it seemed like in all of their original, uh, like framing, the mechanical arbiter was above them all. The mechanical arbiter was like the pure sense of purpose. The pure uh, like whatever the Arbiter did was correct. But if they designed the Arbiter, because they surely had to when they mm -hmm. ousted, ousted Zaval, they surely had to actually set up what this mechanical Arbiter did. So, who designed it? And does that not make them above the purpose? But if they designed it with regards to the purpose, then, does that, then when it failed, was that not immediately actionable? Because it's failure... It was the same as Zoval. So the Arbiter failing doesn't match the purpose if the Arbiter itself matched the purpose because they knew it had failed. Mm. It's like, well, we made the machine. The machine's broke. Well, we made it to break, so it's fine. I don't quite... I I don't know. I think the best response is just Shadowlands beings. Yeah. I'd, hand wave. I'd honestly, I'd just hand wave it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Oh, man. We've got from uh, Eugene who said, So, the Jailer goes to Ulnar, or another octahedron space thingy, to bring balance to the Force. Why <laughs> attack Azeroth and shatter the skybox of Icecrown? I miss older times 
with mysteries below Bale Madan and secrets in the Stormwind Vault. Not this, you know, one above, uh, one above, one above all. Yeah, I, I really agree with you, Eugene, actually. I think the whole thing of, like, just wondering about some cool runes. I mean, like, Bale Modan, what's going on there? The amount of times I've wanted to do, like, a little five-minute quick lore video on Bale Modan, by the way. Maybe we should resurrect that idea for, like, little mini lore things. Anyway, anyway. Um, I, I really agree. Now, I think the big things like Shattering the Skybox of Ice Crown are, like, an awesome way to do it. Like, in-game, because yeah. you actually feel that the changes happen in the world. Um, I think if it's motivated by those smaller things that we see, then that's, that's totally what we should be doing. Um... I think the way to fix up all of that is to rely less on the big, big, big world ending narratives and perhaps like with some aspects, I don't know, maybe because I'm not quite there yet mm -hmm. for the expansion content, but you've been talking about there being the wars and stuff. Yeah. You know, some of that content in FF14 where it's kind of like just the people in the world are driving forward their own story and you're a part of that instead yeah. of, you know, the really big like there's a new Thanos every sort of yeah, it's like it. It uh, they, very quickly. Yeah, it's relatively sort of a, sort. I don't want to say interchangeable, but it's kind of there's a decent mix of the world driving the story forward and then actors on the world coming in and changing how things go. That's a good. Way so of it's kind it. of thing of the like it. Is, there is almost a feeling of it's your turn as you know, th like Eorzea. There's different chess pieces moving around, and it feels like there's some decent complexity where like a, like a faction will make a move. And that'll be the thing every other piece responds to. And yeah. then another faction will make a move and that'll be everything responds to. But it'll be driven by like, you know, individual principles or tenets or things that are already set up. And then it's Instead just Instead of just uh, you know, oh there's a big hole in the sky and suddenly there's a uh, big evil now. That yeah. doesn't even like that doesn't feel that way like, at all. My my initial uh, excitement for Battle of Azeroth was based on thinking that is what was going to happen. Yeah. Um I was that that was just cool to me. Um, but then what ended up happening is they wove cosmic narrative stuff through the faction conflict. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So basically, I, I agree. <laughs> I, I agree. Those little things. Um, and, you know, it's whatever Blizzard does, the little things like Runus and like yep. those little mysteries that are just environmental world building. Blizzard are really good at that. So I'd yeah. love to see them do that more and uh, just just try a different style of the narrative for the next expansion, which mm. perhaps they're thinking about. Because they can't have done, maybe they did BFA and they thought, okay, well, we're, we're going to tighten it up and just focus on one thing for this next expansion. Yeah. But people are having a either similarly or perhaps even more negative response to the BFA story. So mm. maybe that's going to mean they'll rethink how they do things. Hopefully. Yes. Hopefully indeed.